And as a teenager, I traded in three jobs for one business. I became the sole proprietor of a small business in New York. I got the business for 5,500 notes, which means you're kind of broke, but somebody loaned you some money. And the deal was you pay them back 7,000 with interest or you lose your business. So early on, I realized that it was really about the customer. Because if the customer didn't walk in that door in a consistent way, you didn't meet payroll, and you lost your business. So what I had to figure out is what my competitors either weren't doing or didn't want to do. Because I had this little store between two very large Goliath franchises. One was 7-Eleven, the other was Finest Supermarket. And here I am, the teenage entrepreneur that has to somehow make it work. What's the first thing you have to do? Well, you have to think about who your customer is. In my case, I learned a valuable lesson about three market segments. One was the senior citizen. What did we learn about them? They would actually rather get things delivered to their house than come to your store. And my competition didn't do it, so we delivered. The second thing was the blue collar worker, the person that wore jeans and a t-shirt, like my dad. They kept little businesses like mine alive. But what did I learn? They were flush, rich on Friday night when they got paid, and they were broke by Sunday morning. So we gave them credit, and they always paid you back. But the hard problem to solve was those young high school kids. How do you get them to walk an extra block and a half past your biggest competitor to your store? I walk down there one day, I see the kids lined up 40 at a time to get into this store. But there were only four kids in the store. And I asked them, why are you all waiting online? That's a big store and there's only four people inside. The kid said to me, Bill, they think we're going to steal things. I said, oh, don't worry about all that. Follow me. I take them down to my store. I let them in 40 at a time. And to underscore the customer centricity, I built a game room. Anybody here remember Asteroids and Pac-Man and throwing quarters in those games? And that was the honey that drew the bees. And one day a kid said to me, Bill, when we want good food, play video games, and get treated with respect, we come here. And when we want to steal stuff, we go to 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> so there's two kinds of people in the world when opportunity strikes. The one person says, it's got to be right for me. Do I get my money? Do I get my package? Is the car included? Am I all set? And the other person, when opportunity strikes, says, I'm here in service to the company. If there's an opportunity, and the company needs me to help the company do something important, I need to be in service to the company. So I get this offer to go to Puerto Rico. I had uh, a new wife and a newborn baby boy and a perfect life. And they said, Bill, we want you to run Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. I didn't know if it was a compliment or they were trying to tell me something else because Puerto Rico was dead last, number 64 out of 64 operations across the whole company. But it was interesting. I said, you know, we're going to take the chance and we're going to go for it. High trust between my wife and I. I get to Puerto Rico, and what do you think they expected? Of course, they expected the American with all the answers to be barking the orders. Here's the plan. Let's go get it. But instead, for two weeks, I just listened to the people. The people speak, and I obey. Why are you guys so messed up? What's wrong with this place? And they basically told me three things. One, we need a vision. Where do you want us to go? Two, we want to be inspired and happy when we go to work. And three, the last guy took away the holiday party, and we like to dance in Puerto Rico, bring back the holiday party. Well, quick study I am, I realized that number three was even more important than number one and two combined. I go back the next day, I said, okay, we got the vision, here's what we're going to do, it's all about the customer. Number two, we're going to be happy and inspired when we go to work. And number three, I'm going to give you that Christmas party, 
You've got the number one salsa singer in the world, Hilbertito Santa Rosa. We're going to do it at the El San Juan Hotel. And we're going to dance and party until 3 o'clock in the morning. All the way out into the parking lot, we'll be dancing. Of course, I knew Hilbertito was their favorite. They all stand and cheer. Puno, high fives. Everybody's happy. And then I say, but there's only one catch. There would be nothing noble about dancing to Hilbertito Santa Rosa or anyone else at number 64. We got to be number one. We got to be the best in the world at what we do for a living. Well, now, of course, all the air comes out of the room. All of a sudden, it's not so fun anymore. But trust is the ultimate human currency. All I said is bring it every day to the best of your ability. I'll do the same. Give me some trust. I'll give you some trust. I got your back. Let's see what we can do. That year, we were like Sea Biscuit, which was a, a, a historically pretty fast horse. Coming around the track, in October, we were like number 10. By December, we were chasing the lead, and we finished the year the number one district in the world for Xerox, from 64 to 1st. People will forgive leaders for a lot of things. We all make a lot of mistakes. But they will not forgive you for lack of vision or a bad strategy. Because a bad strategy just causes people to dig a deeper ditch to nowhere. They work hard, but it goes nowhere. Where a winning strategy combined with hard work and a complete passion and focus on where the customer needs to go next not only changes cultures and makes companies winners and builds large ecosystem, but it creates memories, friendships, and trust that last a lifetime. 